uh, trying to get across. Okay, this is recording. Good. Okay. So, first of all, I want to make sure everybody agrees on, on one thing. I'm going to take this duct and go straight across here. And I'm going to say that this is, let's say this is a round duct, right? So it kind of looks something like that. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say that air is going in here at the rate of uh, 1,000 cubic feet per minute. Okay. A lot of times you'll see that abbreviated as CFM, 1,000 cubic feet per minute. So Stavros is not here because he was having a problem with that. How much air is coming at it? Is at the other end. A thousand. That pre seems pretty clear to me, right? There's got to be a thousand. A thousand going in one end. A thousand's got to be coming out the other end, right? Okay. So now, if we get a change in this ductwork, thousand CFM. Okay. Let's say I tell you that this ductwork is a 12-inch um, diameter round duct, right? If I asked you what's the velocity of the air going through here, this cubic feet per minute is a quantity of air. It's a thousand, it's like 10 by 100, by whatever, by whatever, it's a volume of air cubic feet per minute. That's the amount passing through. So, so we call that Q, right? So now the velocity, the, the area of this duct, and it's gonna be gonna represent, if I do it, do it from a cross section, it's gonna represent a straight line. Air is passing this point at a thousand cubic feet per minute. Okay, but we're also interested in what's the velocity that that uh, of that air that's going through there. How many feet per minute is that, or feet per second more likely is that going through at? So we know that the quantity of air that's going through this ductwork is equal to the velocity times the area, the cross-sectional area of the ductwork. So if this is one, I'm going to take that away. I'm going to say that this is one square foot. Right? What's the velocity of air that's going through there in order to get a thousand cubic feet per minute out of this stuff? Well, it's got to be going through at a thousand feet per minute. Right? If this were two square feet, right, it'd have to be going through at 500 feet per minute. If it were 10 square feet, it'd be going through at 100 feet per minute. Right? Because it's 10 square feet, 100 feet per minute would be 1,000 cubic feet of air every minute. So, right, that's a basic equation for us, right? That's something that we have to rely on. So let's actually calculate it for a 12-inch duct, right? That's, that's, uh, that's one, one uh, it's a round duct. What's the cross-sectional area of a, a one-foot diameter duct, right? What's, what's the area of that? It's equal to pi r squared, right? Pi r squared or pi, uh, pi d over 4, right, d squared over 4, right, either one is equal to 3.14. The radius is half a foot, right? So half a foot squared is 0.25. So what's the area of this? Right, let's get a calculator up. Point, uh, excuse me, there, 3.14. Pi times 0.25, right? That's that's a quarter of a, uh, excuse me, 0.25 is equal to 0.785. This is 0.785 square feet is a cross-sectional area of this ductwork. There we go. Q is equal to V times A, right? Q was, uh, we, we, uh, we have 1,000 cubic feet per minute times V, which we don't know yet. That's what we want to, uh, it's equal to V times the cross-sectional area, which is 0 0.78. 0 0.78, what did I say it was? I put my cap, 0.785, right? So if I divide it by 0.785 on both sides, that should give me the velocity. Now remember, this is 0.785 what units? Square feet, right? Feet squared, right? So I'm gonna divide by 0 0.785 feet squared, and what does that leave me with? Feet cubed, feet squared, that leaves me with just feet per minute. So what's the velocity? It's a thousand divided by 0.785 feet per minute. The velocity is 1,273 feet per minute. Okay, I'm going to give you a duct, which is, uh, and I'm going to make it a little simpler. 
I'll make it a little simpler by giving you a rectangular duct or square duct. Right, this is going to be really bad drawing. Here's our duct. Okay, this duct is one foot by one foot. Okay, and then it goes into a transition. It expands to two feet by two feet. Right, rectangular duct. And then it, it goes back down into a 12-inch diameter round duct. Okay. And I'm going to tell you that the quantity of air, Q, going in here is equal that we need to move is uh, 2,000 CFM cubic feet per minute. Okay, so tell me, what's the velocity here? What's the velocity here? What's the velocity in this circular duct down here? Okay, so we got Q times Q is equal to V times A. Okay. Or in other words, you could actually change, since we're really interested in the velocity, why don't we just use the formula A is equal to Q over V. Right, same formula. Okay. Cross-sectional area is equal, or I'm sorry, why do it that way? V is equal to Q over A. Right, that's more obviously more direct. Right? Okay, so what is Q? Q is 2,000 feet cubed per minute. And what is the area of that first section? Right? One by one is what? It's one foot squared. Right? Right? One foot squared, right, is the area, just one foot squared. So this is left with feet squared per minute. Feet per minute. That's our velocity. 2,000 feet per minute. Right? Couldn't be simpler. You tell me now what's the velocity at point B. The two by two. So the cross-sectional area is four square feet. So you don't even have to use a pencil, right? Five hundred feet per minute. Everybody's on the same page with that, right? We're all okay. Okay. What about that circular duct at the end? Now remember, I'm now, hang on a second. That's round duct, twelve inch di diameter round duct. What's the cross-sectional area of twelve inch diameter round duct? We just worked it out, didn't we? 0.785 square feet. So it's going to be 2,000 over the cross-sectional area, which is 0.785, right? So this is, this was 2,000 feet per minute. This was uh, 500 feet per minute. And this now is going to be, anybody got a calculator handy? It's going to be the fastest of all of them, right? I'm sorry, what's that? 2548. 2548 feet per minute. In order to move the same quantity through this ductwork, same amount goes in has to come out, right? So that Q stays the same, right? So in order for that Q to stay the same, if the duct is narrow, it's got to move faster. If the duct is wide, it can move slower, right? And ductwork's going to have transitions. It's going to be areas where it's smaller or wide, and we're going to take advantage of that. Because there's going to be situations where we want to move stuff fast, and there's going to be situations where we don't want to use the energy to move it fast. We we don't need that velocity to keep things going. Right? We we uh, may be able to afford to move it slower, so we have to move so much air. Right? So so that's just really kind of basic, right? Okay. So now, a lot of times it's difficult for us if we have a duct, right? And I'm telling you, I'm interested in what the velocity of air in this duct is, right? Well, if I cut the end of the duct off and put a device on it to measure how fast it's coming out, you know, that's one way for me to measure the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the quantity of air, the velocity of air. We have tools that actually can do that with these diffusers in these rooms and so on and so forth. But that's, you know, nobody usually cuts duct up to do that. What they do instead is they drill a hole in the duct so they can insert a tube in there, pitot tube. So they can measure, not the velocity. What's the pitot tube actually measure? Measures the velocity pressure, right? And that really measures the total pressure, but, but technically, technically the total pressure. But for us, for right now, we're going to say that it measures the velocity pressure. How do we know what the velocity pressure is? The only thing that affects the velocity pressure is the speed of the air going through there, right? So we have a formula that we learned previously that says, 
So I'm going to use a formula. Uh, 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 v is equal to 4,005 times the square root of the velocity pressure. Okay. All right. That's good. Okay. 4,005 times the square root of the velocity pressure. Okay. So now, in order to measure the velocity, I want to know what the velocity pressure is. Right? So at this point here, right, the velocity, and this is in, it's going to give us a result. The velocity pressure is in inches for our units. And the result, the velocity is going to be in, is going to be in feet per minute. Here's our ductwork. This is 2,000 feet per, feet per minute. This was 500 feet per minute. And then we went down into here, and it went up. Well, I'm going to call it 2,500 feet per minute. I don't remember what it was, but I'm going to call it that. We went into that round duck. So over here, it was one, it was one quarter inch. Is it going to be higher or lower here? No. It's going to be lower, right? Because the air is not moving as quickly, right? Static pressure might be different, right? Because it's expanding and stuff like that. But the velocity pressure is going to be lower. So what's it going to be equal to? The velocity is going to be equal to 500 feet per minute. It's going to be equal to 4,005. I'll move to 4,005 here, right? It's going to be equal to the square root of velocity pressure. So I'm going to square both sides. That's going to be roughly 1 over, uh, 1 over 8, right? 0.125. And I'm going to find the, I'm going to square both sides. So the velocity pressure is equal to the square root at, which is well, about point, uh, uh, one ten times one. It's, it's very low, 0 0.01, something like that. It's going to be very low velocity pressure. I didn't. It's not real fast air moving through here. How about here? Over here, we're going to do the same thing. Calculate the velocity pressure there, and I know immediately it's going to be more than a quarter of an inch because it's moving faster than the air here. So if I want to know what the velocity pressure is, the only thing I need to know is the density factor, which are calling one, and the velocity of the air. Next, if I know what the velocity pressure is in the duct, what does that tell me? Then I also know the velocity of air in that duct. Okay. Now, remember, a pitot tube, when you put it in there, really measures the total pressure, the velocity pressure plus the static pressure. Okay. So we have to do a little bit of work to actually really measure the velocity pressure. It's not just the flow. But if we know the velocity pressure, we know the velocity of the air. That's all we need to know it. Yes? The density factor? Um, I, uh, if if the you're... The density... The bigger than the yeah. Oh, oh, you mean in, like within the building, building, it, within it's the like building so itself? High. That's that's an interesting. You, you want to know something? That that's an interesting thought because actually, for instance, when you are like right here, the way we deliver heat and cooling is through air moving through a duct, and and the amount of heat that's in the air is relative to its density. If you warm it up to 100 degrees, push it into this room, you have so many BTUs for every cubic foot of air. But if the density of the air is only 90%, now you have to accommodate for that. And you're exactly right. That's, an, that's a perfect example of where the density factor might become important. Because then you might underestimate your heating needs by 10%. Right? You would have to push more air or air at a higher temperature to deliver the same amount of heat into the room. Okay? Same thing. Well, yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Well, not really with water. Because... With water, we're not it's, it's, the density is not changing appreciably for water. Yeah, you know, with elevation, air it is right. Okay, so okay, so now let's move on to that. Let's move on to this idea of static and and uh, uh, total total and uh, uh, static pressures. Here's duct. Okay, okay, I'm sending air in there. Q is two thousand feet per minute. Okay, I'm sending air in there. I'm going to put a gauge on here that measures static pressure. I'm going to put one over here that measures static pressure. There is a fan down at this end, and the fan is pulling air through here. Okay, this fan is generating a negative pressure here, right? A negative static pressure. 
Okay, and I'm going to say that the static pressure at this point here, the static pressure is equal to minus three inches. Not unusual in the extensive ductwork system. Minus three inches of water. Okay, so now what's the static pressure going to be here? <coughs> is it going to be higher than three inches? Three inches. I'm going to let's assume that this is a hundred feet of galvanized iron ductwork. Is that static pressure going to be more than three inches, less than three inches, or three inches? Static pressure. Negative. I'm sorry. Remember, I put that negative sign there, right? Because it's suction. Let's think about this. Static pressure is the suction. Let's say you have a vacuum cleaner. Sucks like a bandit up me at the vacuum cleaner itself. Now you put 75 feet of hose on. At the end of the hose, do you expect to get as much suction as you did close if you had a six foot hose? Probably not, right? The static pressure here is lower, right? Static, or a, in a sense, higher. It might be negative two inches because what happened? You have resistance to the airflow in that ductwork. So this, in a sense, is energy. It's potential energy. It's energy that's going to get the that, that The only reason the air is moving is because you got a negative pressure relative to outside the duct, the three inches. Uh, it's it's higher in terms of numerically, but it's less suction, right? Okay, okay it's less suction. It's yeah. less energy to move the air. Okay, so this is lower. What determines how much lower it is? What do you think determines how much lower it is? The length of the pipe, the length of the duct, right? Because it's giving us a resistance. The roughness of the duct, because the rougher the duct is, the more resistance. And the velocity of the air going through here. The air move faster air moving here through here is more turbulent and it's having a harder time moving through here. So the velocity of the air, the roughness of the duct, and the length of the duct determine how much that uh, how much energy we're going to lose in suction between the fan and this point down here. Okay. So why does how does that impact us when we're doing duct design? Okay. Well, let's say that I have a hood over here, right? This is going to hood, and that hood has slots on it where, you know, there's slots on it. It's at the end of a table. The guy's working in it. It's got to pull stuff in here. And we know that at this point, in order to make this work, hood work good, we need a suction pressure of negative two inches. Well, we, in order to get negative two inches here, we have to know what suction do we need at this fan so I make the fan big enough, right? So when we're troubleshooting ductwork, we might measure the suction pressure here and work backwards to the, the place where, it's, where, where we're supposed to be working to see whether or not it'll capture this velocity and we have enough. But when we're designing ductwork, we work the other way. We figure out, I need negative two inches of static pressure here. So if I had 100 feet of duct, well, now I need three inches. If I add a bend, now I need four inches. If I add a transition to a smaller duct, I need five inches. So all of these things are things that impede the flow of air and, and, and make you lose energy. So if you don't give it at the end where the fan is, if you're not generating enough negative pressure, the duct, the hood that you're designing won't work properly. Okay, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to actually start to learn how to calculate where these losses are. And how much we're going to actually lose. But before we do that, just real quickly. Okay, I'm going to, uh, let's see. Just one quick example here. Okay, this area over here is uh, uh, two square feet. This area here is one, one foot squared. Right? And the volume of air that's going through here is 1,000. Uh, uh, cubic feet per minute. Okay, and uh, but, 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 uh, let's see. And my velocity press. Let's calculate my velocity pressure here, and my velocity pressure here. Okay. So what's the velocity area? If this is four square feet, if this is I'm sorry, two square feet, thousand feet per minute. How fast is the air moving through here? At this point. 500 feet per minute, right? Good. See, not that hard, right? 
Now, over here, how fast is the air moving? Right? The air is moving at what rate? One, one square foot, 1,000 cubic feet per minute. It's got to be moving at 1,000 feet per minute. Right? So we can calculate what our velocity pressures are going to be here. Right? The velocity pressure here, I'm, I'm going to make up a number. <laughs> Say the velocity pressure is 0.2, and the velocity pressure here is 0.4 inches of water. 0.4 and 0.2. Right, we know it's going to be higher here, right, because the air is moving faster. Okay, so how is this related to the static pressure and the total pressure? Well, if I put a pitot tube in here, what does the pitot tube give me? It gives me the total pressure, right? So the total, say I tell you that the total pressure here is equal to, um, 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 see, this is, the velocity pressure is uh, plus, 0.2 plus 0.4. Okay, the so total pressure here is uh, uh, two inches. Oh, negative two inches. Total pressure here is negative uh, three inches. Okay, so negative now what's that? Total pressure is negative two inches. Why is it negative two inches? Because the suction pressure is more than the velocity pressure. Okay, that happens. You'll see that in, in most on most ductwork. Up downstream of the fan, the negative pressure is relatively high relative to the velocity. The total pressure is often a negative number. In the TP equals SP plus. Right. So what? So that well, what can we deduce from here? What the static pressure is, right? Yeah. Okay. So what's the static pressure? This is plus two. This is negative two. Plus plus point two. This is negative uh, two. What does the static pressure have to be? It's got to be negative 2.2, right? What's the static pressure have to be here? It has to be negative 2.6, right? Remember our fans are down at this end, so that's why static pressure is more negative there than it is there. If I told you that at this point here, you know, somewhere, somewhere else over here, that I measured the static pressure. Static pressure is very easy to measure, okay? Static pressure is very easy to measure. And total pressure is very easy to measure. Right? Static pressure, you just put a hole there, put a device against the duct, not into the duct, but against the duct, and it'll give you the static pressure. Let's say the static pressure is minus uh, 2.4, right? And uh, 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 the total pressure you can measure with an anemometer stuck in there, and that's, a, that's the velocity pressure plus the static pressure because it's inside the ductwork, right? Let's say that that comes out to... Uh, uh, negative, uh, uh, negative uh, uh, 2.6, right, or something like that. What can you calculate now? You can calculate the velocity pressure as well. And the velocity pressure should come out the same. If, unless there's a transition, a change in size, it's going to come up to the same as we calculated for here. So the velocity pressure, unless the duct changes diameter, the air is moving at the same speed. The velocity pressure is always the same, but the static pressure can change. And the static pressure is your loss of energy that's going to take place as you go through the system. Okay, so let's give this, let's go through the uh, textbook and we'll actually give this a try. Some of the exercises as well. Okay, so I'm going to go start at chapter five. Okay, chapter five, he begins by describing some duct systems and so on and so forth. But I want to get into first, uh, we already went through some of that. Okay, uh, types of ducts, types of plants, you might find them, and he kind of re repeats himself there. Uh, he about, This is where he's going through an evaluation of the various judgments you have to make as to what kind of hood you're going to have, uh, whether a hood will do the job, what, you know, where it's going to be located, what the hazards are, and so on. Okay. And and these are some of the you can go through this in the book and figure that out. Here's a typical layout for a hood, a hood duct system, an air cleaner, more duct going to the fan. Usually the duct air cleaners before the fan, because a lot of times if it's abrasive or acidic, you want to protect the fan as well as whatever you're discharging it to. And then after the fan, you go out to a stack. Uh, what's the static pressure before the fan? It's positive or negative? Negative. What's the static pressure after the fan? Positive, because it's pushing against the ductwork. Everybody agrees with that. If I drill a hole in this duct here on this side of the fan, it's going to suck air in. If I drill a hole in the stack, it's going to leak air out. Okay, good. 
Okay, so here is, here's a measure of static pressure. Remember I said it measures the pressure from the side of the duct. The speed of the air doesn't influence the pressure. That's only measuring static pressure when you, when you see that. Everybody agree with that? That's only measuring static pressure there, right? When you have an anemometer and when you have a pitot tube, it has two holes in it, one facing into the flow of air and the other one on the side, just like this is on the side. So the velocity of air is not pushing into that hole. So that hole is measuring the static pressure. This hole is measuring the total pressure, pressure from the air and every, remember the static pressure acts in all directions. So it's measuring both. That's why you got to subtract one from the other. You're getting a measurement from a pitot tube, total pressure and static pressure. So if you want the velocity pressure, you have to you have to have either the device calculator for you, or you have to calculate it. Right here, we're just measuring the static pressure. Most of the time, we're going to be interested in the static pressure to start off with, because we're interested in knowing what static pressure we have to achieve to do the job to get the air and move it to move at the speed we want. Okay, static pressure leads to velocity pressure, right? The only reason you have velocity pressure is because you have static pressure, you have suction. Otherwise, if there's no suction, air's not going to move, no velocity pressure. So in a sense, velocity pressure is kind of a kinetic energy, and static pressure is stored energy. That's your energy you're going to use to move stuff, right? And as you, use the, as you lose that to friction and heat, as it gets pulled through the duct around turns, transitions, and so on and so forth, uh, 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 you're using up that that stored energy, that that potential energy. So you have to make sure the fan generates enough of that stored energy to uh, get, get through all of those various uh, things that are slowing things down. So let's take a look at this. So here's a typical ductwork system. Here's a hood of some kind. We're going to be looking at a lot of different designs of hood. What's the static pressure outside the hood? Zippo, nothing, right? Because it's just out in the open air. But when you get into the hood, you get like a lab hood. Over here, you're going, to have, you're going to start to feel the air sucking in. Another thing about static pressure. You guys ever, if I had a vacuum cleaner up here, and here's the vacuum cleaner. Remember the old style vacuum cleaners where you could take the hose, there's cylinders, you could take the hose off and put it on the other side and turn it into a blower, right? You can still do that with some. Yeah, I know these stand-up ones are kind of weird, but you can still, you know, if you have a cylinder one, you can probably do that. If I connect it to the suction side, how close do you have to get to that thing with your hand to feel the suction? Very close, a few inches, right? If you're more than a, if you're more than three inches off the floor, you're not picking up dust, right? You got to be very close, right? So you lose that suction pressure, that that energy from that suction pressure very quickly. Same vacuum cleaner, same hose, same amount of air going through it. You put it on the back side. If I hold it up and blow it at you, how far away can you feel? Across the room, you'd feel it back there, right? So suction pressure, you know, this is not a very efficient process, right? So we have to make sure we have, we have what we need, the design of the hood, the amount of air movement, so on and so forth. We have what we need to, to capture the contaminant at the distance from the hood that the guy's going to be working with it. Okay, so the static pressure inside the hood is not very big, but there's a point here, static pressure, which is just inside the hood, certain size duct at a certain point, that's a certain number of diameters of ductwork up from the hood, where they measured a static pressure of negative 1.2 inches. When we design these systems, we're going to choose, this is the hood we need for this job. ACGIH and some organizations and the manufacturers, they have technical specs on hoods. And they'll tell you to capture at this distance, this kind of particle, this kind of fume, and so on and so forth, that at this point here, you need a certain static pressure if you connect the duct to it. So that number, that number that we need to make this hood right is something that we're gonna get either from the ACGIH standards, they have a book, a manual uh, that they republish every year, all different kinds of hoods and what, what the performance has to be of the hoods, what, what formulas you can use to calculate those values. So either by using their calculations or the manufacturer's spec, you determine that has to be negative 1.2 inches, right? That's not anything you can do for yourself. You could do it experimentally if you wanted to, but usually you're getting that information either by calculation from the ACGIH book that describes each hood, or, and I'll bring a, I'll bring a copy in next time, 
or from the manufacturer's specs. So that's what you need. You need that much pressure. Okay, so let's see. That's fine. We want to generate that much static pressure there. But what happens here? We got to go around the column, right? We have a bend. What does that bend do? That bend introduces energy loss. You lose kinetic energy. You use uh, stored energy. So now at this point, and you lose energy uh, to the length of this ductwork and the size of the ductwork or the, the uh, length of the ductwork. At this point, you need 1.6 inches of negative pressure, negative static pressure, in order to achieve 1.2 inches there. Right? So now you put a filter in the way. Filters an even bigger impediment. So in order to keep 1.2 inches there, now you have to make up for the loss through this, through this filter, and you have to generate negative 2.6 inches there. Now you've got two elbows and a straightaway and a third elbow, and at the fan, a certain distance from the fan, which we'll discuss, certain distance from the fan, in order to you have, you calculate, because of all these losses, you calculate the losses, you calculate that in order to have the negative 1.2 inches that you need there, you need negative 3.0 inches of static pressure at so many uh, diameter, diameters up from the fan. That's, where you, that's how you design your ductwork system. In addition to that, you have to account for the fact that there's going to be some back pressure to your, your, your flow. And in order for this to work, you've got to make sure that this duct is wide enough, big enough, your stack, that it only generates one inch of back pressure, static pressure, back pressure at this point here. So what will that help you determine? Help you determine how fast the speed, how fast the fan you need, what type of fan, how fast it needs to spin, RPM, and how many horsepower it has to be. And then you can de and you can design your ductwork system and whether or not it's got a rain cap and whether or not what the height has to be and so on and so forth. So you are going to be in charge of designing this ductwork system from scratch. That's what this course is all about. When you're done, you should be able to design something like this. Okay. And in fact, you know, we're going to cover two, there's really two courses kind of squeezed into one. Normally we would just do industrial ventilation. So we're going to we're spending the first half of this semester, maybe a little bit more on this. You know, and you'll do a project where you design a ductwork system. You pick what industry you want. You can make it up. It could be real. It could be imaginary. Uh, I'll give you references to different kinds of ducts, different kinds of industrial processes that you might want to look at. And you evaluate what the hazard is. You evaluate what the material is. You evaluate what the capture velocity has to be. What your uh, what type of uh, what manu what type of ductwork you can look, they have catalogs online for all kinds of ductwork. You do all the calculations so that you size the ductwork and so on and so forth. So you actually wind up uh, designing the whole thing from scratch. Okay, so let's move on. But this is tough. I know 8 to 10 is, is like a bad time for this kind of stuff. But So here's our three main formulas. These are the most important formulas we have. Q is equal to VA. We just went over that. The total pressure is equal to static pressure, velocity pressure. And the velocity, which we determine now after a little stumbling, is equal to, uh, in feet per minute, uh, is, uh, is equal to 4,005 times the square root of the velocity pressure. A corollary of this would be the velocity pressure is equal to the velocity over 4,005 squared, whole thing squared. Okay, so you can go from velocity to velocity pressure. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's go on with this. Okay, so now... The way we're going to do this, a lot of this stuff, when we look at the loss, energy loss, due to a turn, an elbow, a length of ductwork, a transition from big duct to narrow duct, a merging of two ducts together. When we look at this stuff, we're going to have to make a judgment. What's going to influence how much energy I'm going to lose, how much more energy I have to put into my fan? And like I said before, it's going to be equal to for a straight duct, it's going to be equal to the length of the duct. It's going to be equal to the roughness of the duct, right? And it's going to be equal to some factor, you know, the velocity of the air going through there. The faster the air is moving, the more energy we're going to lose to friction and vibration and heat and so on and so forth, right? And we're going to, uh, same thing with an elbow. It's going to turn. The air's got to make a turn. The momentum, the energy you lose going forward, it's got to be turned around. You're going to lose energy, that's static pressure. You're going to lose, really, from our perspective, that energy is static pressure. Each one of these different things that are going to cause us to lose energy are going to have, we're going to have tables or calculations 
that have been made for us to estimate what the amount of energy loss is going to be. For duct work, it's going to be the material of duct work, which you know, kind of implies the roughness. It's going to be the length of the duct work, and it's going to be the velocity of the air moving through. For an elbow, it's going to be whether the elbow, whether the turn is a 15-degree turn, a 35-degree turn, a 90-degree turn, a 180-degree turn. Right? That's going to influence how much energy we're going to use. On an elbow, some elbows, you ever seen when they put ductwork together? Sometimes it's, sometimes it's kind of elbow where it's like, it's like a, 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 it's got, it goes straight, then it turns this much, then it turns this much, then it turns this, how many sections it has. Those sections determine the smoothness. You can have an elbow, 90 degree elbow with two sections because it goes bink and bink and goes down. Or you can have it with five sections, bink, bink, bink. Think, think, a grand, what you want, a gradual turn. You lose that energy to a gradual turn. So we're going to have to have a loss factor. We're going to call that factor, for the most part, usually a number called K. And K is going to be multiplied by the velocity pressure to determine how much static pressure we lose. Okay, so if we know what that K is, and we know what the velocity and velocity pressure are, going through the ductwork, we know how much energy we're going to have to put back how much suction pressure we're going to have to put back into that in order to make up for it. Okay, so here, uh, variations. K is K times the velocity. Uh, static pressure loss in inches is equal to K, this factor, uh, four times the velocity pressure. Uh, static pressure loss is small K. Uh, you know, you'll see various different tables who use different numbers for it. Large no, not really. It's just different tables. Like, in other words, on one table for elbows, they may use that. Another table, they may use that. For hoods, they may use this, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, so so you can see H loss, that's hood loss. In other words, the amount of energy you're, you're, you're losing to the, for, because of the entry losses at the hood and so on. So they're, they're going to use different you, – you, within the different literature, you're going to find different nomenclature. But for right now, we're going to look at – there's going to be ways for us to get to this information. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Let's see if we got an exercise we can actually do here. Here's an exercise here. <coughs> okay, what individual losses can you identify? Okay. Okay, so static pressure loss at this elbow – is equal to some factor K for the elbow times the velocity pressure times the density function. Again, most of the time, we're going to ignore the density function for our own use. And the, the radius over the diameter is a measure that will, in fact, two things will, met, will impact how big a loss an elbow gives you. One is if it's a narrow, if it's a wide pipe and it's got a, and a very quick turn, a very short diameter turn, a radius turn, uh, that'll have one K factor, but if it's a narrower pipe with the same diameter turn, it may have a different uh, K factor. So the, the ratio of the radius uh, of the turn and the diameter of the ductwork, assuming it's round, is going to have an influence on this also, but we're going to work all that out from tables. Okay, what's the, what's the elbow loss K factor for a radius uh, of curve, uh, for a, uh, a radius of curvature of 2.0. In other words, the radius of, of the turn is two times what the diameter is. Radius of the turn is, say, the ductwork is one foot in diameter, and the radius of the turn is two feet. Okay, so here you got to kind of illustrate it here. So what's the what's going to be the loss there? Well, now we're going to go to one of the tables, table number 13. Okay, you got if you got the book handy, you can open it. If not, I'll just try and put it up on here. If I can open another copy of the book. Let me see if it'll let me open it again. Uh, nope, wrong one. I wanted. Oh, you wanted an extra. You know what I'm going to do? You can use you can use my book until I can work it out with him. Matter of fact, here. I'm not sure it's exactly the same edition. Yeah, I'm not mine, and I'll bug him about it. He's he's in the desert here. He's not the usual. He's 100 years old, and he's in the desert. He's not the easiest guy to get working on stuff. Okay. Okay. So now let me get to see if I can't open this book twice. Did that open again? That is no stone. Okay. So I'm gonna have to go 
go to chart 13. Yeah, you know, I did. I did. I just, I just, I don't want to kill time looking for the folder. I put it in, you know, I put it in this folder here. Chart 13, do I have it here? <coughs> Let me go to it one time. Then I'll come back to this page, which is, what page are we on here? We're on 510. Here is, this is a chart. Here is the different kinds of uh, 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 ducts. You can have a continuous or smooth duct. They often will class it using continuous or smooth. You can have five piece, four piece, uh, uh, three piece, or you can just have a lighter duct, just a corner like that. And if you look down here, here's a round duct, gives you the radius to diameter ratio, 2.0. If it's a smooth transition, that K factor, that loss factor, is 0.13. If it's a four piece, it's 0.19. If it's a three piece, it's 0.33. So as it becomes a more, se a more severe transition, the K factor goes up. You have a loss goes up. Also, as that R, uh, as the uh, radius and the diameter get closer together, in other words, instead of like a nice two foot radius curve turn. It's now a one foot radius curve and one foot diameter duct, uh, one foot curve, or a, a, a half a foot curve, or something like that. You also, that transition also takes a little more energy, that key factor, that's a good, good number. Okay, let me see what we have here. There we go. Oh, it's a, it's a Christmas miracle. It's still working. Okay. Let me show you, the, give you a closer look at this thing. Okay. By the way, these uh, these charts are, are charts that are, you have spreadsheet for. You don't need the spreadsheets, but you can use the charts instead. And those, and those uh, spreadsheets or charts will help you do the calculations uh, to do that. So here we go. Here's the K factor, right, these numbers in here, and it's based on, the radius over the diameter, so in other words, if it's a one-foot diameter duct, but it's a two-foot radius, a nice, easy curve, it's down here. And if it's a smooth transition, your K factor is small. So the amount of uh, static pressure you're going to lose in that duct is much less than if it were a much tighter turn and if it were only a three-piece turn or a miter turn which would represent a much bigger energy loss. So keep that in mind when you're designing this ductwork. So let's go back, take a look at the next uh, thing that comes up in there. Okay, and if I do that, I think it should. Okay, five, 10. Okay, here we go. Now, it wouldn't hurt for you guys to go through this, you know, uh, uh, at home a little bit for the net, each chapter a little bit in advance. So we can kind of work through the calculations a little bit more quickly. But let's go to the next one. What's the actual loss in inches uh, or millimeters of mercury of air flowing through a 60 degree three piece elbow at 3,440 3, feet per minute with an R over D of 1.25? Okay, so I should have pulled out that table while I was there. I'm going to do that right now. Why is this doing this to me? Good. Done. Oops. Too far. Returning permits. There you go. Don't miss a trick here. Okay. Jeez. Can't find this thing. Where are these tables? Here we go. That looks like tables. You know, it's not jumping to the page. I'm not sure why it's not working. Let me reopen this. Bingo. Okay. And where am I? Okay, I'm here. 
Oh, now it's working again. 12, chart 12, 12. Oh, this is with different charts. Oh, chart 12 for the chapter, maybe. Bingo, here we go. Where are the time? 227. Okay, I'm centered now. I'll be able to come back here. So you'll notice these different, uh, these different hood styles. If you notice, there are formulas here for calculating what the uh, what capture velocities I want at different locations, different height, different uh, distances from the uh, slot hoods and so on. But we'll get to that. Chart 18. Here we go. Yeah, let me pull this out. Okay, that's going to be back here somewhere. I don't see it. Okay, here we go. What was the uh, what was the problem again? Anybody remember? Five ten. Five nine. Okay, what actual loss would you uh, look, expect to find air flowing through a 60 degree three piece elbow at 340 feet per minute? Now, what do you need to calculate first? What's the formula for, what's the formula for your static pressure loss? It's equal to static pressure loss is going to be equal to your velocity pressure times that K value times the density factor, which is one. Right? So what do we need? We have velocity. We don't have. The velo uh, no, we don't need the area, right? We just need, remember, velocity is equal to 4,005 times the square root of the velocity oh. pressure. Right? So we, we have everything we need. So calculate first the velocity pressure. Okay? You guys, I'll leave that up to you guys. Right? The velocity pressure is going to be equal to 34, whatever it is, 3440 divided by 4,005. Right? Square, find, find that fraction and then square it to find the velocity pressure. Okay, what's the velocity pressure? Anybody calculate it yet? 0.74. Okay, 0 0.74 inches, right? Right, that's your velocity pressure. What's your K factor, given those uh, various parameters? Right, what was the R over D? I'll bring the I'll, I'll put the chart back up here. There's the chart up there. What was it? What was the uh, radius over the diameter? What was it? One point was the R over the one point five. Do you guys say? I don't have it in front of me. And what was it? Three P's. Okay. So there you go. There's your K factor. Okay. Multiply your K factor. No, yeah, this is three piece, but it's uh, it's a nineteen something degree. It's a degree, and this is sixty degree, and that, uh, you have to. Right, this is round round ducks in ninety. Oh, sixty. This is a sixty degree duck. <coughs> this is sixty degree. Oh, okay, another chart. There's another chart here. Chart. Yeah. No. I, I tell you what, for our purposes, for right now, assume it's a ninety degree. Okay. Assume the problem was ninety degrees. What would you get? 
Uh, use what well, uh, um, um, uh, 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 what is it called? Is this uh, like ex extrapolate or, or uh, extrapolate between the two closest numbers. Yeah. Remember, these charts are not going to always going to have exactly what you need, so you're going to have to. Yeah. These are problems we're going to be working on now. We got some traffic. Here we go. Take one. Usually on there somewhere. Nope. I think I started at five ten, but that's okay. All right, so um, 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 we could go to another table. Let me see. Tables were at 237, I think. 60 degree, three elbow. Okay. 230. These are different hug styles. <coughs> System effect, contraction, expansion. So you can see all these tables are going to have uh, uh, values that will help you calculate these numbers. Round, duct, 60 degrees. Uh, is there an adjustment here? For angles different than K, uh, let K equal the angle over 90 degrees. So you're taking two-thirds for 60 degree. You're going to take K and take two-thirds of K. Okay? So what, did, what was K? What was your closest estimate to K? 1.25, three piece. So it was somewhere between these two numbers, right? I'm going to call it 0.4, right? Or uh, say 0.39, right? So two thirds of that would be 0.26. So you multiply by 0.26 times the velocity pressure. Which would you calculate the velocity pressure was? Okay. What was that? 0.74, so it's probably 0.26 times 0.74, which is about, it's going to be uh, 0.76 and a quarter of that is going to be roughly 0.2, let's say. So you're going to lose 0.2 inches of static pressure to that turn, that material, that, that number of sections, and so on and so forth. Does everybody have that? Everybody okay with that? Right? It's not, it's, we're not talking like, you know, calculus, advanced, you know, like three-dimensional geometry and anything like that. It's fairly simple stuff. A lot of it is table-driven, right? So if you're, if you're confused a little bit, don't worry about it. It doesn't get really much harder than this because most of what we're going to be doing is not reinventing the wheel. We're going to be mostly relying on tables and charts to give us the, the uh, uh, calculation, help us with the calculations that we need. Okay, so let's come on, let's move on from there. So I'm going to go back there. So it is that the whole thing's in that table. It just gives you some 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 ways to adjust to that. Okay, and five. Okay, that was five exercise five nine. Okay, exercise five ten. What is the friction loss for a length of galvanized duct with the following parameters? The diameter equals eight inches. Q, the volume of air that has to flow through it is 1,000 cubic feet per minute. L, the length of it is 43 feet at standard temperature and pressure. R is equal to 1. What, is R, uh, what does R represent? Remember we, with duct, I was saying there, were several, there, was, there was the, uh, uh, the velocity is going to impact this, the K factor for the, uh, the roughness of the duct. They're, they're telling you in advance. Assume a roughness of one. So we need a table that will give us the loss that's, that's associated with uh, ducks. And I think, did they tell you the table right here? Um, 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 um. Did they give the table away? Uh, uh, uh. There's a couple of ways to do this. I think chart, uh, chart five has some information on it. Transition losses, roughness and correction. Here, take a quick look. This is the roughness correction factors. So if you have... If you have galvanized, plain old common galvanized iron steel, right, then uh, for th at 1,000 feet per minute, uh, at the average duct velocity, 
right? It's it's saying that the roughness factors I assume one for the roughness factor, okay? But if you have at that same at, at, at that same velocity, if you have flex stuff, right? What's the roughness factor there? Two point five. You lose more energy to flex stuff because it's got ribs in it. And it's nasty, rough stuff. If you have a nice, smooth PVC pipe, PVC duct, which is like you're going straight through the duct, nice and then then it's actually a lower roughness factor than uh, than uh, and actually uses up less energy than galvanized wood. Yes. A PVC is much if galvanized steel. If you look in it, it's like it's first of all number one. It's 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 not completely smooth because they have a galvanized surface kind of. So why do we use it more? Why do we use it more? Because it costs about one hundredth of what PVC does. Not only that, PVC right. when it burns is toxic, so it's it, it, you wouldn't be able to code in a building like this. You'd never be able to use PVC duct, right? So so the building code doesn't permit it. But there are applications for it. For instance, you got to build a hood. With a very corrosive chemical, you can't use galvanized iron, right? So, so yeah, that's a that's also a consideration. So, when you're designing your ductwork, you pick a project out, pick an interesting contaminant that may make you stretch yourself on the materials a little bit. Okay, so let's go back to where we were. Okay, so we were talking about the the uh, uh, our galvanized duct. So now we know the diameter, we know Q. So what if we know the diameter of the duct and we know Q, we know the velocity. We can calculate the velocity. If we know the velocity, we can calculate the velocity pressure. So now all we need is the K is the uh, uh, roughness factor, the K value, and the number of feet. Okay. So let's see if I can find that here. Okay. And you know where I'm, we know where I'm going to go for this. I am going to go back here. To chart 5a. Okay, it's chart 5a. Okay, the k factor for straight duct is in this little section here. Okay, uh, uh, friction losses, right? Uh, now, I'm going to really be slick and I'm going to say to myself, you know, the diameter of this duct is eight inches. And what was the flow rate through the duct? Thousand okay. I'm looking up at you guys because I, I can't do both. I can't, you know, I got a little screen here. It's tough for me, even though it's a big screen here, it's a little up here. So we got eight inch duct at a thousand feet per minute, right? I'm going to draw a line through those two. Okay, I'm going to try and draw a straight line through those two. Eight inch duct, a thousand feet per minute. What's my frictional loss per foot of duct? What is that K per foot? What does it look like there? Looks like about 0.03, right? How many feet of ductwork do we have? 43. So we're going to multiply K times R times, remember R is the roughness, it's 1. K times R times the length of ductwork, 43 feet, times, what am I missing? VP, right? So we got still got to calculate VP. Now, I'm going to give you another dirty little secret. Let's look over here. Velocity and VP, right? We already know the flow rate, right, which is for, for the flow rate is 1,000, right? So let me see. If I extend this line, right, watch this. If I extend this line, what does it tell me the flow rate is? What's the velocity? 3,000 feet, what? Oh, they gave, what did they give? They give us Q or did they give us the velocity? Uh, you know, um, um, standard cubic feet per minute. I, mean, I think that's the same thing as saying STP, standard cubic feet per minute. In other words, cubic feet per minute at standard temperature and pressure, I believe. Because he says something like, if you want to look like a professional, always write S. I don't think so. Yeah. I, I don't so I don't think you need that. I believe that's what it means. Yeah, I'll check it, but I think that's what it means. Okay, so now did they give us did they give us Q or did they give us the actually I think they gave us Q, right? The volume. And that was three thousand 
What was huh? that was one thousand. Okay, so Q the volume flow rate is one thousand. So the velocity in an eight-inch duct would be. I'm going to connect all three of these, right? I'm going through eight inches and a thousand cubic feet per minute, and and that tells me that I'm go the air rate is going through there is about a little under three thousand cubic feet per minute, three three thousand feet per minute, and the velocity pressure is looks like about 0.48. So. Long story short, you got a piece of paper there. Write it all down, right? Static pressure loss is equal to K. What's K? K is 0 0.03 times roughness, 1, times velocity pressure, 0.48, times the length of ductwork, 43. Is this friction loss? That's friction loss, yes, right there. If you look at the bottom of that, that's K per foot. Right, that's the amount of that's a, a a a constant that a rate of friction loss per foot of ductwork. Right, so so let me let me write this out. You know, Stavros. I know he likes to drift in late, but this is ridiculous. Right. Stavros, I know Stavros. He likes the dish. <laughs> you like to turn up like halfway through the class. That's okay. He's a smart guy. He'll catch up. He won't have. I don't think he'll have a problem. Even though, even though for some reason I have no idea, I couldn't convince him that the amount of air going into the duct is the same as the amount of air coming out of the duct. He's still a smart guy, so he'll catch up to this. Yeah, but the, the, the diameter of the ductwork didn't change, so the velocity's got to be the same. Right? The velocity can't change. In other words, if the velocity changes from one end of the ductwork to the other, if the, the diameter doesn't change, then he has got to be piling up somewhere. Right? It can't slow down over here and go fast over here. Right? Or go fast coming out, faster coming out than it goes in. If the diameter of the ductwork changes, then the velocity changes. Right? The volume stays the same, but the velocity changes. That's true. Okay, so now, where's my notebook? There it is. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. So the problem we just worked on here was uh, galvanized or friction loss, galvanized. This is the one right here, right? So what is our, uh, our static pressure loss going to be equal to K times R times velocity pressure times, you don't have to be in this, this order times um, 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 the length of the ductwork, times the density correction factor, which is going to be one. This is going to be one. They told us the roughness factor. There's one in galvanized. We would have assumed that anyway. So the K was 0.03 times the velocity pressure, which was 0 0.7 something, right? 0.48. Point, I'm sorry, 0.48 times the length of the ductwork, which is 43 feet. Right? So how much static pressure are we going to lose here? Point oh three times point four eight times forty three. Right? Six cents of an inch of static pressure. Okay? Everybody happy with that? Is that the answer? Is that the answer they have in the book? Anybody know? I could check. Why not? Right? See at the end of the chapter. We encourage you if we get the right answer. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Which one was this? Number nine? Number ten? Okay, so let's see. Velocity is uh, 20. Ba -ba. Velocity pressure is point. Well, we didn't get exactly the same number because we didn't calculate it. We used the table, right? Uh, ba -ba. The K loss factor is 0.03. That's about what we got. So they got it's point. It's it's 0.43 times one times one times 0.15 inches times point. The K was that 0.03 times 0.15. We use 0.48 or something like that. Times 43 is equal to what did we get? We got yeah, so ours are a little bit different. 
but we're in the ballpark. It's only different because they calculated it, calculated, no, pencil and paper. We use that chart as an abbreviation. But we could have calculated it. We could have calculated the velocity from Q equals VA. We could have calculated the velocity pressure from velocity is equal to 4,005 times the square root of velocity pressure. We could have done what they did as well. We saved a little bit of time this way. Okay, let's go to the next problem. Okay, so next problem. Let's go back here, 511. Okay, now, where else can you lose? We, we have observed you can lose energy in a straight duct. You can lose energy at a turn. And we're starting to understand how much energy these things can cost. So now where else can you lose energy? Well, they have these things called transitions or, or T's where one piece of duct has to tee into another one. It's not uncommon in a factory to have a single fan serving several hoods. So eventually that single fan, you have to have places where each individual hood is tying into the main trunk of the ductwork. So it's not unusual to have these kind of transitions. Usually you want the additional duct to join in uh, at the point where, where you transitioned into larger duct, right? Since, since you got air moving in here and air moving in here, you're going to need a larger duct or it's going to go much faster, right? So this angle is supposed to be not more than 15 degrees. That angle, that, that, it's a tra that transition, that spread shouldn't be more than 15 degrees. And this angle, the, depending on what this angle is, that determines how much loss you have in that transition, the diameter, the velocity of the air, the velocity pressure, in other words. So let's see if we got a formula for that. Okay, so uh, chart number 14, branch entry losses. Let's see if they give us a problem that involves that. What's the estimated static pressure loss in inches water gauge for a branch entry of 30 degrees where the branch entry velocity is 4,500 parts per of, of feet per minute? Okay, and there's a couple of methods that you could use for that. Uh, there's also a chart that you can use for this as well. Okay, so let's go to the chart. There's actually, they give you the chart here. Okay, the loss, the, the uh, loss fraction, the K factor at, for 30 degrees is 0 0.018. Okay, loss fraction is the same thing as K. So, if the velocity of air that's moving through here is 4,500 feet per minute, and the K factor is for a 30 degree angle is 0.18, how much is it? What's our frictional loss there in static pressure? Okay, well, we have our velocity was what was it again? 4,500? Let me find it. Let me. Okay, here we go. Open this up a bit so we can see it. Um, no, it's just a table. Uh, I need to go back here for the problem. 4,500 feet per minute, right? What's our velocity pressure for 4,500 feet per minute? Right? Uh, let's see. V is equal to 4,005 times the square root of velocity pressure. V over 4,000 and 5 is equal to the square root of the velocity pressure. So the velocity pressure is equal to this, V over 4,005 squared. V over 4,005. So V is 4,500, right? Over 4,005, right? What is that equal to? That's about, yeah, 1 point, uh, I'm going to call it 1.25. Right? Times, and you want to square that. So what's 1.25? Oh, I'm sorry, say again. 1.26? Okay. 1.26 squared? No, no, I Oh, you did. Oh, you found. Okay. 1.26? Okay. Times K? What was the K factor? K was 0.018. 0.18? Right, so 0.18 times 1.26. Okay, I see fingers moving. I don't hear the response yet. Mm -hmm. 
Zero point two two. That's our frictional loss to the, at that transition. So we have to make up for that loss at the fan. Okay. So now let's go next. Let's see what we got coming up next. Let's see. Go back here. Okay. Oh, there's our answers. Oh, that's it. That's all they gave us in the way of exercises. Okay, I'm going to put together a homework assignment that <coughs> that will maybe incorporate a lot of these different calculations. But I'm going to concentrate on these elements, and I'm not going to put them together again. I'm not going to put them together. I'm going to give you an example of uh, ductwork, different roughness, you know, maybe one or two pieces of ductwork, different lengths, different roughness. Uh, different velocities there going through it gets you to calculate what the uh, uh, static pressure loss is going to be. I'll give you a bend, you know, different sections, so on and so forth. You know, you can use a table or charts. Uh, I'll give you a transition. Uh, 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 and I'm going to throw in maybe uh, uh, some a a really basic, simple hood system. A hood, what the static pressure has to be. And I'm going to ask you to calculate for me what the static pressure needs to be at the fan in order to achieve that, right? So you don't have to calculate horsepower. You don't have to calculate any of the other stuff. Uh, I'll give you, uh, I'll, uh, I'll let you just calculate based on this design what that static pressure has to be, uh, what the suction pressure has to be here to achieve the, one, the static pressure you need here. And all of these, all the stuff that we did today is all you're going to, does all the tools you're going to need to be able to do that, right? So that you literally, for the third class, you are at, on the verge of being able to design a basic ventilation system, okay? I think next week we start talking about hoods. Am I correct about that? In the next chapter, <laughs> chapter six, hoods, hood selection. Now, once we get into hood selection, we're going to see a whole nother kind of mechanics where we have to be worried about what kind of material we're going to capture. Is it heavy? Is it particulate? Is it vapors? Is it warm? Uh, what is the geometry of the workspace? Where's the worker going to stand? We, how do we select the hood? Once we've selected the hood, what are the characteristics of the hood? Well, how do we know how much air we have to suck in order to protect the worker? Okay. So we're going to do that next week. And it's going to really see, for instance, this is a slot hood. For instance, this might be a, a dip, uh, some sort of dip bath for cleaning parts or something like that. And there's a slot at the back to pull air across it, right? And this particular hood has sides on it, which means it's more efficient. Doesn't have to pull air, doesn't pull air, waste time pulling air from the sides into the hood. The, in, the static pressure that you need here would be different than the static pressure you would need to accomplish the same work if these side panels were not here. So if you design the hood without the side panels because he needs access from the side, your static pressure has to be higher because it's got to suck more. It's got to have more air moving across there to make up to the fact that it's got to pull air in from the sides as well as from the front. Right? Other kinds of hoods. That's why it's preferable to see hoods that drop over things, hoods that cover and close things, right? Because that means you need less static pressure, less energy to actually capture it. Okay, so I'm going to stop here. It's late. And I think we're just now starting to get into what this course is really about. And nobody is falling asleep or, you know, look, nobody looks like nobody looks discouraged like they did last week. OK, there are a couple of people definitely had a look at discouragement on their faces last week. But this is better now. Right. This is we're starting to see it doesn't look impossible. Right. Am I OK with that? And I assume that you guys are comfortable with this now. Right. Yeah, just more it's, it's approachable. Yeah. Well, once it, as it gets more proud, unfortunately, the first couple of weeks we'd, we would going through a slog of like theory and a lot of formulas and stuff. Now that we're getting into practice, we have a combination of formulas and tables that are really going to help us do this stuff. It really save us quite a bit of time. And as we move on with this, we're even going to incorporate using Excel spreadsheets so that it will do the calculations for us. So in other words, if we can set up spreadsheets, he has spreadsheets. He has pre-set up. Some of you guys have that on your on your on your clips. That was kind of like part of the big package. But however, we're actually going to set up some of our own spreadsheets so that you know that if you if you need the static pressure, you can 
you know, with this, when you're working with duct, that you can put the embed this formula in here, so that now all you have to do is enter the length or the you know the length, the diameter, and so on, and it'll do the rest of the calculation for you. You know, so we'll build our own spreadsheets and stuff along uh, as we go forward and learn this stuff. Okay, so, no problem. It's uh, um, I recorded this. I'm not in love with everything we did. I stumbled a little bit at the beginning, but in case it'll help you, I'll post it and put it back up. Okay. <laughs>